go ahead and lay onto your back. It's nice and comfortable. Start to let your good deep breaths flow in and out. Focusing a bit on the low back today, it might be nice to just leave the, the knees bent, feet planted, because you notice that that keeps the low back a little bit more flat on the ground. When you start to slide the legs long, it creates an exaggerated arch in the spine. And while that arch is necessary for standing up straight, when we're on our back, it can make it feel like it's pulling those muscles instead. So, with the low back relaxed, start to let these good slow breaths flow in and out. So your body's starting off from a place of comfort, of ease. Any worries of the week, any worries of the day, even worries of the year. Imagine it's all falling away, at least for this hour. We don't have to focus quite so intensely on them. And from that state of relaxation, release, we begin to invite in a simple word, abundance. Abundance will be our big focus as we head through our class today. So often, especially when things don't feel like they're going right, we feel a lack of abundance in multiple areas of life, financial and compassion wise. There's gonna be some words that I'm gonna state in a little while and we'll tune in with our body, how it feels with the abundance with those words. But here, we just received the overall concept that perhaps life has the ability to be just as abundant as I'm willing to receive. Just check in with how that feels in the body. This is about opening up to trust, opening up to hope that things can continue to flow abundantly toward us. So while we take a few more breaths here, just laying on our back, we're going to create a hand shape that for our class today, it's going to help remind us of this concept of abundance. We'll repeat the hand sign a couple of times. It's essentially just a cupping shape. So I'd like to place one hand on top of the other, the hands kind of folded open like I'm trying to hold water in my hand. However you imagine kind of cupping your shape to hold your hands to hold water, form that right above you. It's okay if it's tilted up or more toward the head direction, whatever way feels natural for the wrists. And as we take a few more breaths, imagine the hands are cupped like this because eventually, at some point, we're going to open up to abundance. And so as that abundance flows like rains all around us, here we are ready to, to receive it. Take from that viewpoint, that image, take three more huge breaths, let them flow in and out. Hands relax. Let's begin to set up for a gentle twist. That'll be our first true shape. Start to slide the left leg long. The right knee will come into the chest. 
give it a nice hug. Feel how these muscles, especially the muscles of the low back, are willing themselves to relax. Eventually, we're gonna ease this knee all the way over to across the body to the left for a twist. But first, let's ease up the hip joint. So let that right knee go into the right hand, the hand trick, pulling the knee wide. And then lifting the knee back up, the left hand takes over, pull it part way toward the twist. Any degree that feels kind of just opening as we're rocking that hip. Take two or three more rounds. The knee open into right hand and come across the body part way. At least one more, two if your body wants quite a bit more. That final time when you're heading to the twist to just stay, if you want the bolster to be under that right knee. Just as something comforting to rest onto, go ahead and slide it to be in place under that right knee. Allow the upper body to try to stay more grounded on the earth. Even if the bolster needs to pop up quite a bit higher, just to be more comforting for the low back, that's fine. With this nice middle height, it pops it up to a really good amount. That hip even gets an opener. But choose the amount that feels good. And all we're gonna do is breathe here, giving that low back the first chance to start opening. So breathe huge breaths in and out. slow deep breaths are flowing I'm going to start saying a couple of different words what your hope and your idea is here is to tune into how the low back responds to and receives each word that we say if it feels like any of these words are being blocked in our body from abundance just take mental note of it. That's something that we still need to work on. So how does abundance flow with the word time? Money. Love. Compassion. Trust. Safety. Maybe your body received each and every one of those very easily. A lot of people have a couple of blockages with at least one or two of those words. It feels like, oh, that one got stuck. And so it's just a note, a good note for ourselves because that's a blockage to abundance in that particular concept. So we'll start to work on that blockage when we get to the other half of the twist. But for now, let's see if you can let some easy breaths flow. We'll take about three more cycles for this.
your third breath finishes, gently ease the hips out. Let the right leg slide long to the ground. Feel how it receives the earth. If we use the bolster on this first side, you can start to switch it over to the second side. Once we're there, left knee comes in, give it a good hug, clasping around the outside of that knee. Moment to just pull it in, close to shoulder. When your body feels ready, we'll start to pass it back and forth. So open the knee out to the left. When it's ready to come up, right hand grabs it, partial twist over to the right. Take two or three more of those. Ready to be on the last one, whether the bolster is at that low height or the medium height. If you're using it, let, let the knee relax. Will the low back eventually starting to open on this side? Maybe it's tight at first. Maybe that's the only response you get. So notice if we can just breathe. Things relax just a little bit. Returning to some of those words we mentioned a moment ago. If there were any that stuck in your body, it's like a clog in the pipes. Let's return back to that word or words, or maybe you intuitively know a different word that gets stuck in your body. Let's begin to imagine that we're working on the pipes now. Trying to make it so that when abundance is ready to flow through us, the abundance, abundance doesn't just get stuck in the pipes and the water becomes gross because it's stagnant. Imagine all it takes to work on the pipe is gentle movement like we're doing. That's kind of like banging on the pipe a little bit and also this slow breathing. Imagine the breath going right on the spots where we envision the clog to be in our pipes. One of the notorious areas are the low back or the, the neck and shoulders. Sometimes those are those spots that get really tight. Especially focus on those tight areas, those places to breathe. Let's send about three more breaths through this half.
Remember that third breath finishes. Start to return the hips to the ground. Perhaps let the knees rock just a little bit left and right. Even if it feels better for the low back to hug the a hand into the each knee, that nice hug into the chest. You can take that gentle rocking of the low back from there. Feel if the pipes are willing, if not yet, maybe cleaned out yet. Maybe they're willing to be a little bit more. Good. If the knees lifted in, set the feet back on the ground where they were kind of close to the glutes. And here we're going to locate our strap. Put the strap open all the way out. And we're going to set up a huge loop for the strap. So feed the end through both buckles and then back out the last one. It's going to be a huge loop, so don't leave too much excess. So right ball of foot goes into one end of the loop. What we're gonna try to do is feed the back of the head into the other end. The knee is welcome to be bent if that's where the hamstrings are at. Make sure, yeah, the metal buckle's not directly behind where the head's gonna go. <laughs> Good, so the idea is when we get it all situated, it's almost like a hammock, the right hamstring and the back of the neck both get it a stretch together just by being here. So if you're here, your hamstring is super open, you hardly feel anything at all, you have absolute permission to tighten your circumference to the point where you do feel the hamstring stretching. Also make sure that the strap is right behind the back of the head. It's not too low where the head falls back, so it's not on the neck. It's also not too high where it slips off the top. It's kind of in that nice middle spot. The idea here is that sometimes the big muscles that are kind of surrounding the low back, sometimes these big muscles will be a bully to the low back because those are smaller. So as these hamstring muscles will get tight, they'll kind of pull against those back muscles. The idea here is just slow, easy breathing, giving those big hamstring muscles a chance to get a little bit longer so they don't have to bully quite so much. Sometimes also, as we're here, we notice how the pipes are doing in this area, the whole backside of the right leg. And maybe we end up finding blockages here too kind of areas of our pipes to work on so that abundance as it trickles into our body, it can flow freely everywhere. We keep the left foot planted like this. It's more of a gentle opening. If you're at that point, you're like, I really want a little bit more, you could slide the left leg long. Don't feel obligated to, it's only to the point that feels good. We're here for just a little bit longer for this right half. That rush of air continuing to try to work on the pipes. More huge breath in for this half. And with that nice exhale, start to grab onto each side to support the neck through the transition. Left knee slides in, step the left foot into the fabric. Right knee bends, 
plant the foot close first. Just like we did on the other half is those hamstring muscles on the left. Get the first initial chance to start stretching. Sometimes the energy on one half is so different than the other. Just notice how things are feeling right now. Maybe it's super tight compared to the other, or maybe it's the opposite. Slow, easy breaths. Maybe the hands fall open to each side, left and right, with kind of a cupping shape. Imagine abundance. It's like our toes have unzipped the sky a little bit. There's this nice trickle of abundance. As it falls into your hands. Notice how it feels your body receiving that trickle of abundance. wants to slide out longer, you're welcome to. Just notice again, how does your body receive abundance with that slight shift? the body can receive for two more full breaths. Good. There. Let's grab onto each half of the strap. Gently let the head drop back down. We're gonna release the strap off to the side for now. And then same as before, either both bent knees come in and we gently rock left and right a couple of times or feet are on the floor, letting the knees tilt left and right a couple of times. Whatever feels like it's more gentle, more kind of helpful for the low back. that until it feels like you're in a good spot to start coming up to a seat in place. So no pressure to rush there or anything. Eventually we'll make our way up. So you could just roll up if the low back would be okay with that. Or you can just take a fetal position and gently press your way up. Whatever feels like it's going to be most kind. Good. So let's take a cobbler's pose, but the feet are a lot further forward than normal. What that does is help the whole spine, all those muscles in the back, have a little bit more chance to relax and release forward. So feel free to really tune into the body. What's receiving it is we start to tilt slowly forward. Some of those low back muscles are kind of acting up tight, or maybe as the weight of the head drops down, maybe we're filling it through the back of the neck. You always have the option, if you'd like, to swing the bolster around in front. It's something that the head can rest onto, but whatever height option that means. And 
And all we're doing is giving time and patience. So a lot more space for the low back. the floor and gently press up enough that we can allow right leg to open up to the right. When that happens, release back forward. Okay, there's a new spot of our muscle groups on our back. It's starting to speak to us with that slight shift. Just until we can slide the right foot back in and the left foot goes out. Lifting up, slide the foot back in, 
So we're back where we were, this time without the bolster for a moment. Tilt back forward. Hands on the floor to give us a little bit of support for the back. But then walk the hands as far over to the right side as it feels necessary to stretch the left half of the low back. So some people will walk really far over to that side. Some people, you know, a good halfway there. It's to the point where it feels like it's helping the low back get stretched just a little bit. the second side. So ease your way, don't sense, no sense of rush. Ease your way eventually over to the left side. Any amount that feels good to stretch the right half of the foot. the center. We're here just a couple more breaths. Take your hands into that kind of cupping shape. Just a couple more breaths. Reminding the spine where the straight forward alignment is. Feel that trickle of abundance into your hands. Notice how the pipes of your body are as they receive that abundance. It's almost like when it seeps into the hands, it kind of flows up the pipes and around the rest of the body. down to support the spine as it lifts up. So allow both legs to open out wide. Scoot the bolster at a nice medium height up to your right side. Let the right elbow come down onto the bolster. That hand, the right hand supports the head. We're comfortably leaning over to that right side. As long as it doesn't feel too intense for the side body, let the left hand come up, but then just kind of rest the weight of that left arm onto the head. Well, that left half of the body getting pulled long, helping that part of the spine wake up just a little bit more, open up the, that part of the pipes. Breath in, and out, and then first free up the left hand as it starts to drop down. The weight of that arm will make it a bit easier for the spine to gently rise. Do the same thing to the second side, bolster over to the left. Press the left elbow down, head into the hand. If it's not too intense already, maybe the right arm comes up, resting the weight of the arm on the head.
more inhale exhale gentle ease up one more from this position the bolster can be out in front if that's easy to set the forehead onto gentle tilt forward and if it's comfortable to set the head down let the hands come back into that cupping shape just a couple more breaths easy back support and then hands just receiving more of that trickle of abundance Again, flip the hands down to support the spine as you walk back up. Good. Let's set the bolster off to the side. Swing both knees underneath our body. We're going to come gently toward a kneeling place. Don't feel any sense of rush, but let's take a couple of cat cows. It's going to take a little while for those muscles to ease into each of those shapes. Let it take its time. Gently wrapping up and down. Those back muscles more willing to work together in one goal, one unity. Good. So back to neutral. Let's slide our right leg long to the right and then come up high. So the right hand slides down the right leg. Let the left hand reach up and over. Just a couple of easy breaths here. Gentle rise. Like we're waking up the spine. Maybe it's almost like it's been asleep for a while. Go ahead and slide the second leg out. Left hand down the left leg, right hand up and over. back up both knees underneath us we'll take a couple of breaths in puppy pose with so many forward folds a little while ago puppy pose will feel nice because it gives the back a chance to have an arch so leave the hips over the knees drop the hands down and still maintaining hips over knees walk the hands forward it's going to be to a point where either the forehead drops down or maybe the chin drops down depending on what's more comfortable but either way, it's less of a flat spine, more of an arched heart down. So imagine somebody's got a, a finger in between your shoulder blades. They're trying to push that spot down just another inch or so. Let the heart melt down, getting another inch closer to the ground. That nice kind of length the spine there.
be a flow ready, maybe immediately or maybe a couple of breaths from now, we'll transition to child's pose. The knees can be narrow or wide. Sometimes I love to slide the bolster in front of my forehead so it feels like there's much more space for my nose to not be squished. So if that feels nice, you can add it in. Up to you. Your hands could be any position, forward, backward, up or down. If there's no effort in the hands, you could perhaps choose to flip the palms up to be once again in that cupping shape. So it's up to you if that feels like it's too much effort to maintain that, no, no pressure, no rush. And feel those low back muscles again, giving that beautiful chance just to stretch, to relax. Receive for three more breaths. Those three. Flip back around to a seated position. We're gonna use this loop strap for a couple of last poses. The poses will be on our back, but I'd like us to set up kind of like a hula hoop around our body first. So keep, keep the loop. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. Good. And you want it to be set kind of by where the armpits are, so kind of higher up the back. Good. You can kind of use the arms, just keep that in if you start to head down onto your back. Use down to one elbow and then to the other elbow. And then when you're down, you've still got the strap here. So the idea here, first and foremost, go ahead and slide the left leg long. Bring the right knee to the chest. You're hooking the strap around the outside of that knee, but then tightening it up to a comfort level. So you get to choose how tight that is. The idea here is the strap holds us such that our hip flexor gently gets to be pulled into a stretch, but it's, it's like an effortless stretch. Sometimes we clasp our hands around this knee and it's all about the effort and the pulling in. This time, when we find that place of comfort, it's it's essentially effortless. It doesn't take anything. It like floats in that area, and it makes it so that the muscles of the hip flexors can be much more relaxed in that place. Good. Slow, easy breaths when you get to that floating spot. It's practically just being held up. I air. We won't be here too long. Let's take about three more breaths for this half.
After that third breath, gently unhook the knee. The leg won't want to go straight right away, so give it time to start dropping the right foot to the ground and eventually start to let it slide back out. So feel those muscles have a long chance to release. Good. When it gets there, left knee can gently come in. Capture the outside of the knee with this loop. Same thing, not too long, just several good breaths. Try to get that sensation of Maybe at first it's like the muscles feel like they have to be contracted. They feel like they have to hold this up, but then there's that sudden release when the effort doesn't have to be there. To relax the best we can here for three more breaths. Same slow journey of release. Eventually the foot will find the floor and then eventually it'll slide long. So that pose is also known as the wind relieving pose. We don't always think about it, but sometimes blockages in the intestines actually create that pain in the low back. That helps to give a little massage to our colon, to our intestines. We've got one last stretch, again, using this, this strap. This one, go ahead and take the strap out from underneath us. I usually like this last stretch to be a little bit tighter, like three or four inches tighter than where I was just a moment ago. But take it out from underneath you and then it's free on the outside. It's still looped though. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got that loop set up, the idea is step right thigh inside of it. So it's around the back side of the right thigh. And then the other half of the loop is going to be left arm. Right thigh and left arm. Here it's going to be a twist. The idea is that as you head the knee across the body, this left arm has control of the twist. So if the left arm points to a lower angle, it eases the hip to be a little bit more gentle for the low back. If you pull the left arm to a higher angle, it deepens the twist. So you have that com complete control over exactly where the twist is gonna fall. Find it in a spot that feels useful for low back, hips, spine, all these goodies. Kind of a last little gift for this area. Once again, slow deep breaths, just a couple of good rounds. More beautiful inhale. Nice exhale. We're gonna ease out of this half of the twist, take just as much time as we did coming out of the last pose. Eventually the foot to the floor and then can slide long. When we get relaxed on that path, left thigh steps in. 
left thigh with right arm. So then the right arm pointing up or down will control exactly where the twist falls. So find the perfect amount that's useful, not too much, not too little. deep, slow breaths. We ease gently out of this last side. Send the strap off to the side. We're done with it. It could feel nice to slide the bolster under the knees, even at a kind of a medium height, to give that low back something just gentle to flatten it back, back out, knees are propped up. This will be whatever position helps us to relax into Shavasana. So if you prefer something else, that's also fine. There's never any pressure one way or another. But whatever way is going to help us relax, feel as if, at least to some degree, our pipes have opened up a little bit. We're more willing to receive abundance, to receive joy, love, peace, trust, hope. So we're going to be here for a few minutes. Imagine this trickle of abundance raining down on us. So how nice it is now that your body's more willing to just receive it. Just let our inhales and our exhales flow. Get deep breaths in, long exhales out. Okay, let's begin to deepen the inhale. Exhale. Left, pulling in and out. Producing movement to the body. out in ways that feel really good. Keep 
you'd like a fetal position today, you can take one. Otherwise, at any point, head up when you're ready. No rush. Good. In the fetal position, take two or three more breaths. Then deep inhales and exhales flow. hands come together in front of the heart or even in that cupping shape one more time and I list some of the words that we've mentioned before and just notice if the flow of those words is a little bit more easeful than before time money love Trust, compassion, hope. So even if it flows just a little bit better, we recognize that's how it is to increase our flow of abundance. Just one baby step at a time until all of a sudden we open our eyes and we recognize that all we see around us is abundance. So with this thought to lead us on, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of oh. We've been how now. happiness and peace. Namaste.